What's up guys, JV2017 here, and I'm bringing you a new Fallout 4 tips and tricks video. And today we are continuing my character build series with the other highly requested video game assassin, Ezio Auditore da Firenze. Ezio is a personal favorite video game character for me, and probably the main reason I used to love to play the Assassin's Creed franchise. While Brotherhood was my personal favorite Ezio AC game, his story of revenge and taking down the Templars in Italy were some of my most memorable gaming experiences, so this was a special build for me to create. Fortunately, I had already made a sneaky melee assassin build character with dick tits over on my Twitch channel, some of you know about that, so I do have plenty of experience to lend towards this build for Ezio. Now before we begin, I do want to point out that this is my interpretation of an Ezio build. I'm sure there are plenty of other ideas out there, so if you'd like to share your version of this character, feel free to do so in the comment section below. I try to strike a balance between being true to Ezio, but also trying to make this build fun, viable, and interesting to play in the game, so I hope you all will enjoy. One last thought, I'm usually able to find PC mods that match my character builds, but this time I literally found nothing for Ezio, which is disappointing, so I had to make it myself, and that usually means it looks nothing like the character, so please excuse that while you're watching this. Also, if you're watching this video in the future and there are some great mods for Ezio that came out after I made this video, please feel free to share them in the comments below. That would really help other people that watch this in the future. The three traits that I use to create my Ezio are first that he's stealthy. Obviously, he's an assassin. All of these traits basically relate to him being an assassin, but more specifically. So Ezio, obviously there are plenty of ways you can kind of approach combat in the Assassin's Creed games, but for Ezio, I always love being stealthy and approaching it from a stealth-based perspective. So that really, you know, influence a lot with this build, of course. And next, he has a lot of weapon variety. There's a lot of different weapons you could go and buy. I mean, you would go to the different vendors, you'd be able to buy these huge medieval weapons and use those in addition to a sword and just, you know, the hidden blades, the dual hidden blades that Ezio had. And so we're going to be exploring a lot of different weapon variety in this build. And then, of course, he's lethal. He is an assassin, like I said before, but he is so deadly. I want you to be able to experience how good and powerful Ezio was in the Assassin's Creed games in this game. We want to be able to kill people quickly and efficiently, and that is a focus for this build as well. The special stats for Ezio are 9 Strength, 2 Perception, 3 Endurance, 3 Charisma, 1 Intelligence, 9 Agility, and then finally 3 Luck. And this is of course a 30 point build that includes the 1 Perception Bobblehead near the beginning of the game with Preston, and an extra point from the special book in any category to make this 30 points. So the plan here is to focus on signature perks first, you know, the assassin based perks, and then move into luck for criticals. As you can tell, we're starting at only two luck, but the long term game plan is to work into luck more and more and more. And of course, that'll just make Ezio more and more badass. And you may be wondering, Ezio is a charismatic character. Why are you not going into charisma? And honestly, I tried to make that work and it just didn't work out with this game. We don't have enough starting points to work with in order to make Ezio very strong, you know, to be, you know, proficient with melee weapons, very agile to be stealthy and take down enemies quickly and be charismatic. And so you could go in a different direction with your special stats, but this is just what I chose to go with to make him the most viable offensively. This is an offensive base build and that's what I went with. So the seven signature perks for my Ezio build are Big Leagues, Armorer, Blacksmith, Rooted, Sneak, Ninja, and finally Blitz. And let's take a look at each of those in the perk chart one by one right now. Our first and arguably most important signature perk is going to be Big Leagues. Now it doesn't matter if you're a sneak based melee character or not, if you're using a melee weapon, Big Leagues is absolutely essential. And so with each rank of Big Leagues, you're going to get 20% more melee weapon damage, a chance to disarm your opponent with subsequent ranks, you're going to hit all the targets in front of you, which is great for groups of enemies, and then you're going to be able to hit targets heads clean off and rank 5 of Big Leagues has been fixed. So no matter what, that's been patched, that will work no matter if it's displaying correctly or not. I don't know if you guys were aware of that, you know, kind of bug, but they have fixed that. You don't have to worry about it anymore. So max out big leagues with Ezio. It's absolutely important for his build. So are armor and blacksmith. Those are our two next signature perks. And really, these are just going to unlock extra crafting options. And throughout the Assassin's Creed series, you can actually make weapons or buy them and kind of modify them. You can go to the, you know, vendors and kind of make certain modifications, especially in the newer Assassin's Creed games. And so I thought that was an important thing to kind of include with both of these. So you're going to be able to mess around with your armor. You're going to be able to modify your melee weapons, which is nice. So you've got a nice kind of variety of things to mess around with with your variety of weapons. So I thought both of these were fairly important for this Ezio character. Additionally, 
rooted is very important all the way down at strength nine and while you're standing still you're gaining some extra damage resistance which is nice as well as more damage and what i like about rooted is it reminds me in assassin's creed of all those times where you get cornered by a ton of enemies and you just have to make your way out by you know doing uh you know reversals on enemies you know countering their attacks and so rooted is kind of like you're standing still and you're dealing a lot more damage that kind of you know that kind of imagery popped in my mind when i was thinking of rooted and it makes a lot of sense for this build as well you're gonna deal more damage and you'll automatically disarm enemies that use melee weapons against you at the final rank which is way at level 43 but hey that's really useful and Ezio does you know all the assassins are able to disarm uh, their enemies and so rooted obviously makes a lot of sense for this build now we're skipping all the way over to the agility tree clearly none of our um, you know signature perks are in the middle here to sneak this should be obvious you know with each rank you're going to be harder to detect while sneaking you'll have some extra kind of incentives in here no longer triggering certain things you know running no longer adversely affects stealth which is very useful and then at a higher level you know when it's dark outside which you know it's harder for enemies to see you if you didn't know that when it's dark outside that just makes sense if you're far enough from people they will lose you and so that's really helpful as well once you're on higher difficulties and way up there in level sneak is pretty much an obvious choice for Ezio since we're going for more of the stealthy based Ezio than really anything at least that's how I am viewing this build moving down to ninja again superbly important it's going to increase the modifier that you're going to get while you're doing sneak attacks and with each rank it's going to be at four percent or sorry not four percent four times the normal damage with just the first rank and again we're going for that very early in the game you'll see on the perk roadmap after i'm done explaining perks this is an early perk that we're going to take and so four times normal damage is an instant boost it's very very good the next rank will give you five times and then finally 10 times with your melee sneak attacks and so that final rank of ninja is a huge bump up at level 33 you have to wait for it a little bit but it is very very much worth your time finally our last signature signature perk is blitz and this just changes the game in terms of melee in terms of mechanics and what you're doing you're able to teleport to your enemies and then with the second rank the further you are away the greater the damage so you have an incentive to move away and try to be on the outer range to teleport in bats to hit your enemies in melee range blitz is such a good perk and it makes you know melee viable in my opinion in this game it's hard to make melee viable but really blitz does that it achieves that and it's super important for Ezio now let's look at some additional perks that make sense with Ezio as a character or just help out the build now there's a ton I have here so I'm kind of going to go through them a little bit quicker than I usually do because there's so many different things you could do with this build that would help it out or just make sense so pickpocketing obviously Ezio can pickpocket all the assassins can pickpocket and so really this just makes sense for the character if you want to be able to do that and there's no investments at perception one so pickpocket is something you should think about life giver is something I put us at endurance three with this build and really that's kind of a safe point I like to do with a lot of my builds just so if you are running into something you can go ahead and take life giver as you can tell I took one rank of life giver just in case you know to take that it's just a nice kind of safety cushion with your health being a little bit higher lady killer over in charisma only requires charisma two I gave us charisma three kind of get us to lone wanderer which is something I'm about to talk about but lady killer just makes sense for Ezio he's a charismatic guy again I didn't make the most charismatic build for him but he's absolutely a lady killer and so if you want to take that for role-playing reasons it's not the best perk in terms of value but it's way down at charisma two so not that much of an investment for that Lone Wanderer. This is interesting. I was thinking about this because Ezio doesn't roll with anybody. There's no one by him side at all by his side at all times throughout the games. And so it doesn't really make sense from that perspective. And also you can call in your brotherhood, your brotherhood of assassins, at least from brotherhood and revelations, you can call in assassins to help you out with stuff. And so that didn't really make a lot of sense for me. As you can tell with my level 30 character, I did not take Lone Wanderer. And so you can take this if you want. I'm not going to, you know, say, oh, you shouldn't take Lone Wanderer because it's probably one of the best perks in the game overall, not a high investment. And so this is an option I kind of left in here and I didn't want to make Ezio, you know, too uncharismatic, you know, below three chariz charisma would mean that he's just not charismatic at all. But this is something you could take, just, you know, kind of make that own judgment based on your own build. Action Boy is something I recommend with almost all offensive based agility builds. Action Boy will regenerate your AP faster, 25% with the first rank and then 50 with the second rank. This is great for groups of enemies, great for a melee character build. Overall, a good idea, really. 
Uh, moving target is also a good idea for a melee build. You know, you're running towards your enemy. Say you are, you know, you've broken your stealth. I guess this is more useful for when your stealth is broken and you have to run into your enemies to attack them with your melee weapon. You'll get extra damage resistance and energy resistance when you're sprinting. And then the third rank is just really helpful overall. 50 fewer action points are spent when you're sprinting. So this is helpful when you're just running around the world. And so moving target is something you should definitely think about as well. Moving down to luck, we're pretty much going to talk about almost every single uh, perk in this category. Bloody Mess is something I recommend for every offensive base build. Very simple, you get plus 5% bonus damage with each rank. And then the fourth rank, I don't know about that, it's a little fishy. Um, but Bloody Mess is definitely useful, makes sense. Idiot Savant, so this is something I really haven't touched on yet. We're running a low intelligence build. It's not that I think Ezio is stupid, it's just nothing in here really, really helps out with a melee character build in my opinion. And so Idiot Savant is something you should definitely consider taking if, you know, XP is a really big thing for you. If you wanna get to your perks quicker, which I'm sure a lot of you do, then you might wanna go ahead and take Idiot Savant once you've invested into luck. Again, we only started with three luck in this build, so you're gonna have to invest a few points to get up to it or go and get the bobblehead, but Idiot Savant is definitely worth it and way more worth it when you take it earlier. So definitely think about that when you're making your character in the beginning of the game. Better criticals, as you can tell, I took two ranks in this uh, for my level 30 Ezio. This just increases the critical damage that you're dealing. And so this is just gonna help you. It's gonna, you know, just do more and more damage. We're really just stacking on the damage. That's the point of going into luck and then, you know, executing those criticals. The higher we have in our luck, the faster our critical meter is going to fill. And so better criticals just kind of plays its own part in this synergy of luck based uh, perks here. Moving down, Critical Banker, same thing. You can save critical hits. This is so important for a melee-based character when you're fighting, you know, the Behemoth, so the Mirelurk Queen. That's gonna be really, really hard to just do with a melee character. I mean, Sneak makes it easier, Vats makes it easier, but Critical Banker will also make that easier, so that's probably a good idea to invest in later down the road. Grim Reaper Sprint is also something smart to invest in. Say you're running into a group of like four super mutants that are all around you. If this procs for you, you're gonna restore all of your action points and be able to keep going from, you know, enemy to enemy to, you know, kill them basically. And so you have an additional chance to restore all of your action points. And then finally, refill your critical meter with the third rank, very powerful there. Finally, last but not least, Four Leaf Clover. If you do make it all the way to Luck 9, which in this build is probably gonna take a little while to get to without you know sacrificing other perks, you're gonna have a chance for each hit and vats to fill your critical meter, and then each rank just increases that chance. And so really, again, like I've said before, these all synergize together. And if you're gonna take your Ezio character into the higher levels, the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, then investing in these are just gonna make him overpowered. He's just gonna one-shot everything. It's gonna be absolutely insane, as you'll see, and has as you have been seen in my gameplay in this video. Now that we've got all those perks in mind, let's talk about the perk roadmap, which is pretty much my phrase for which perks you're gonna take at the beginning of the game for the first 10 levels. And this is not to micromanage your character as Ezio, it's really to have a starting point in order to really flesh him out into the later levels. And I think this is a good starting point for you. So first off, at level two, I would take Sneak. Of course, this is a sneaky melee assassin character. Taking Sneak early is gonna help you establish that play style, you know, not using ranged weapons, sneaking around, getting as close as possible possible before you attack, that's important. So we're gonna take that very early. And at the next level, level three, I would take big leagues. Again, we are a melee character, not using ranged weapons. And so increasing melee damage early in the game is important. Same goes with Blitz at level four. We're gonna be teleporting towards our targets. It may not make sense for Ezio, but I think it's early to, I mean, it's important to adopt that play style early in the game with Blitz. And so I would take that at rank four, at level four. And then at level five, I would take rank two of Sneak. I think it's important to take all of your signature perks whenever the subsequent rank becomes available, take it immediately because it's important to maximize those things as early as possible to make this build as good as possible. So rank two of sneak becomes available at level five. I would go ahead and take it immediately as it becomes available. Next, I would take ninja. Again, we're hitting all of our signature perks first and ninja is important for a sneak based melee character. You want to maximize that sneak critical damage. Ninja is obviously great for Ezio. So I would take it immediately at level six. At level seven and eight, I would go ahead for armor and blacksmith. Again, a lot of those components were in the Assassin's Creed games. and I think it just makes sense for the character. And also armor is going to help you with damage mitigation early in the game. So you probably want to get that 
Go ahead and modify some of your things, maybe your leather armor if you're trying to really role play as Ezio. And also with Blacksmith, you can really you know, make some helpful mods for melee weapons earlier in the game. Those things are important, so we're gonna take those pretty early. At level nine, I would take Rooted, and it's a very strong melee-based perk, but also we went all the way down on strength to nine, you know, both for the melee you know, ability and also for this perk. Rooted is great because you'll deal more damage and have a chance to disarm enemies with the last rank, which is something that Ezio does, which is pretty cool. So that's something you'll take pretty early in the game. And then finally, luck training. At level 10, there are some more specific perks you could go with, but I think it's important to adopt, you know, training luck. We didn't go high luck in the beginning because we just don't have enough points to go around like I mentioned earlier in the video. And so in order to get to those really awesome high value luck perks, you're going to have to go into luck training and also go get the luck bobblehead and all of those things. And so you could take a specific perk at level 10, but I would go ahead and go into luck training for the future. Now, if you couldn't tell already, the general playstyle that we're going for with Ezio is to sneak around, be a sneaky melee character like an assassin, and use Blitz to teleport to our enemies and take them out very quickly. You know, we're preferring one shots here, especially once you get past level 20, you're going to be that good. You know, your character is going to be that powerful. And also, it's a good idea to keep a variety of weapons with you. I really do like throughout the game how you could have, you know, your sword, your dagger, your hidden blades, you know, your giant pike, your hammer. There was a ton of different variety of weapons, and I think it's kind of fun to role play and play around with that. So, you know, get yourself a super sledge, get yourself a knife, get yourself a blade, you know, get all these kinds of weapons, bring them with you, and then use them as you will. Moving on, let's talk about signature weapons. And unfortunately, we don't have hidden blades. Like I said before, I couldn't find a lot of Ezio slash Assassin's Creed based mods on Nexus mods. In fact, I couldn't find anything for PC players. But fortunately, we do have Krem's Tooth and Pikmin's Blade, two fantastically overpowered, powerful melee weapons that we can use and make Ezio a real badass in this game. So first off, Krem's Tooth gives you wounding and poisoner's damage on top of having exceptional damage on this amazing mod. Essentially, it's just a machete with a really awesome modifier. And also you get medium speed, which means if you max out big leagues, you're still gonna be dealing 200 damage with this weapon. So it's like you're dealing a ton of damage and you're swinging at medium speed, not slow speed and not fast speed, which is you know kind of the happy medium between those two. Krem's Tooth is my favorite melee weapon, just bar none in this game. It's really awesome and fun to use. Also, I recommend getting the Pikmin's Blade. It's a fast speed weapon. It's a combat knife that pretty much has a double bleed modifier on it. It's like you get it from the mod and also the weapon itself has the wounding modifier. So pretty much you're doubling that effectiveness from a blade and it swings really quick. And so it's more of a burst damage kind of weapon, just like slash, slash, slash. And you're going to be dealing quite a lot of damage pretty quickly with the Pikmin's Blade. So either one of those weapons, I would probably wait until level 10 to get those. I've also already made weapon guides for both of those. So if you're curious on how to get them or how exactly good those weapons are, please check the description below for links to my own videos, my own weapon guides on both of those weapons. In terms of companions, like I mentioned earlier, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for Ezio to have someone rolling with him the entire time, running with him. I mean, you don't really have that in the games. You can call your brothers, you know, your assassin, your brotherhood of assassins, but you don't really have someone with you at all times. However, if you don't want to take Lone Wanderer, because I don't think that's exactly an accurate, you know, representation or description of Ezio, you can go ahead and take Deacon with you. He will absolutely absolutely amplify your sneak based gameplay experience. And so his perk is going to give you plus 40% stealth boy duration and plus 20% sneak attack damage, which at higher levels doesn't seem like a lot, but this will help you at lower levels. So fortunately you can go and get Deacon very early in the game. As you're seeing in the gameplay, I'm getting him right now. And so Deacon is quite a potent character when you get him for your sneak based character. Really, I think there are several ways you could go with this Ezio build. I'd like to know after watching my build, will you play this build, this build that I showed you right now, you know, the more uh, offensive, assassin-based, lethal-based build. You know, how would you build Ezio if you wouldn't play it that way? And also suggest a new character for me to build in a future guide. I've already got Deadpool scheduled for next week, but I'd like to know what you guys would like to see after Deadpool, so that'd be two weeks from now. Share all of that below. All right, guys, today I showed you how to make an Ezio Auditore da Firenze, Master Assassin character build in Fallout 4. And next time we will cover Fallout on my channel, so stay tuned for more Fallout 4 tips and tricks videos. If you learned something new, remember to hit that like button, I would really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe for more unique weapon guides, build guides, and general tips and tricks videos. Talk to you guys next time. Peace.